Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to be going over human NK cell isolation. Now, while there may be many different workflows to obtain human NK cells, in this video, we will be using the 17955 negative isolation kit, which is designed to start from on nuclear cells. Take note that we do have an older classic 19055 negative selection kit that also starts from on nuclear cells. However, this newer 17955 kit is distinguished from that older kit by the type of particles it uses, which are called dextran rapid spheres. As the name suggests, these rapid spheres do allow for the protocol to be a little bit shorter, which a lot of people seem to like. As well, near the end of this video, we're also going to showcase uh, some options that some people may optionally elect to do in order to kind of skew the isolation towards higher recovery. Okay, so with all that said, let's get started. For doing the 17955 NK isolation, you will need prepared mononuclear cells, as well as an appropriate ESEP magnet. In this case, we have the silver Big Easy magnet, as well as appropriate magnet compatible tube, in this case, we have the 14 mil round bottom polystyrene tube, as well as other associated materials such as pipette tips, receiving tubes, liquid waste container, as well as a waste bag, some ESET buffer, pipettes, serological pipettes, and a pipette controller. Uh, take note that all these steps uh, in this procedure will be done at room temperature. First, prepare the mononuclear cells to the prescribed cell concentration, which for the 17955 kit is 50 millinucleated cells per mil in easy set buffer. Once you've adjusted to the right cell concentration, then you can assess how much total volume you have and take out however much volume you will be using for the isolation. In this case, we will be using one mil. So now we're going to transfer that one mil into our 14 mil round bottom tube, which is compatible with the silver Big Easy magnet. And always take good note of exactly how much volume you're dispensing, since that value will be used for all the subsequent reagent addition calculations. Now start the isolation by adding the ESEP cocktail into the cells. In this case, the ESEP cocktail is prescribed to be added at 50 microliters per mil of cells. And I always like to suggest when adding reagents to the cells to ensure that the end of the tip goes into the sample volume and then follow that up with a quick little mix. You just wanna ensure that all the reagent is added into the cells. Now, having added that reagent, you oftentimes want to follow that up, especially if you're working with larger samples. In this case, we're not, but it doesn't hurt, to mix with a serologic pipette. And it's also not a bad idea just to pre-wet your pipette, especially if you're um, recovery conscious. So here, we're just going to do a quick little mix. As well, something else that you can do if you're being particularly recovery conscious is you can actually, assuming your safety regulations allow you to uh, do so, as well as balancing the needs of recovery versus sterility, is actually save this serologic pipette in a sterile tube, since you can then use that for all the other subsequent uh, reagent mixes. Having added the cocktail, now you can just start the five minute incubation time. While the cocktail is incubating, you will then want to take your particles and vortex them. Make sure to vortex these for 30 seconds, since this will ensure that they're evenly dispersed. As well, it is important to keep note that as prescribed on the information sheet, when you add the particles into the sample, you will want to ensure that there's no incubation time. In fact, what you want to do is be prepared to add ESEP buffer right away after adding the particles and mixing them to ensure that there is no incubation time. The reason for this is that if you do do an incubation time, then the recovery can sometimes be a bit lower. Once the five minute cocktail incubation has elapsed, 
then you're going to want to add the vortex vector and wrap spheres to the sample. As before, when you're, at, when you're doing this addition, you're going to want to ensure that the end of the tip goes into the sample liquid volume. Okay, so here we're just going to take out 50 microliters into our one mil of cells. And I just want to showcase how you want to make sure that is in the liquid. Do a quick little mix there, getting all that reagent into the sample. As hinted to earlier, you could have saved the previous pipette optionally, and this will allow to do a more thorough mix. Now, this more thorough mix is definitely a good consideration if you're working with larger volumes. But certainly you want to be mindful of the elapsed time because you want to make sure to minimize and have no incubation of the particles with the cells. So you're going to proceed to top this up. In this case, we are adding four mils of ESA buffer to top it up. And we're adding four mils because we were starting with a volume less than four mils. So we're starting with one mil. And the instructions on the 17955 information sheet say that for start volumes less than four mils, you top up to five mils. If I was starting with more than four mils, then I'd be topping up to 10. Okay, so here you're just doing a nice little mix. Place this into the magnet without the cap, and then start your three minute magnetic separation. And there we go. After the three minute magnetic separation time has elapsed, you're gonna wanna take a receiving tube and then you'll pick up the magnet and in one nice smooth motion, invert the tube to pour out your desired cells. So obviously here, this being negative selection, your labeled unwanted cells remain in the tube. Keep note that when you do this pour, you want to hold it for two to three seconds but make sure not to blot or shake the tube. Okay, so you take this, pour, hold for one, two, and there we go. Now you have your negatively isolated NK cells, and here you have your unwanted cells. Okay, now this will be used in the next section uh, of our video. But for now, most other researchers, they can just proceed to use this for their downstream applications as required. So at this stage, most customers would consider the isolation done and they can go on to use these isolated cells for any other desired downstream applications. However, as hinted to earlier in this video, other customers might optionally neglect to take these labeled cells and try and obtain a few extra NK cells from them. So this is completely optional and it should be kept in mind that the following steps that will be done here, they can increase recovery a little bit. However, it does come with some risk to decreasing the purity. So how much the purity may be decreased versus how much recovery is increased. Unfortunately, that can be heavily donor-donor biological variation dependent. Uh, but essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna top this up, resuspend thoroughly, and then place this in the magnet to reseparate. And I do like to stress that just how thoroughly it is resuspended can also affect how much the recovery efficiency is increased. Okay, so having taken the tube out of the magnet, you can see that some of these labeled cells are still on the side. So a starting point is it's not a bad idea just to gently tap the tube, and this will kind of encourage those labeled cells off the sides of the tube wall, okay? Now, once you've done this, then you're gonna proceed to resuspend these cells. And that will of course be done using the ESA buffer. And the amount of ESA buffer that will be dispensed, again, goes back to how much the uh, instructions were calling to top up to. So as you might recall, 
since we were only starting with one mil, we were being asked to top up to five mils. So in this case, we're going to add about five mils worth of ESA buffer. And it's quite important to be very thorough, as I remarked earlier. And you want to just kind of dispense it down every surface area within the tube. So it doesn't hurt to just be nice, slow, and meticulous. And you want to just also slowly spin the tube. Essentially, it's really, really trying to get everything back into a nice single cell suspension, making sure nothing is uh, left on the sides of the tube. Take your time. Okay, now once you're fairly satisfied that this has been sufficiently resuspended, you will place this back into the magnet for the same amount of magnetic separation time. In this case, it will be three minutes. As always, make sure the cap is off when you're doing a magnetic separation. Once the separation time has elapsed, as with before, you're going to want to take that magnet to pour out your now desired fraction. I will say that some labs, what they will elect to do when they're first evaluating this technique is that they will keep the first desired fraction separate. And so they'll use a new tube to take this received fraction, okay? So as before, you want to pour, hold it for two to three seconds, do not shake or blot, and there we go. So here you have the original NK cells from the first supernamed and now the hopefully uh, pure and a few extra NK cells. Uh, the premise behind this technique is that when you were doing that resuspension, reseparation, um, you will have liberated some of those NK cells that could have been interlaced among the labeled cells. So that's the idea is that you do a nice thorough resuspension. And then when you reseparate, those NK cells that might've been liberated are in this second separation, okay? So today we went through using the 17955 NK kit to do the isolation as well as touched on how you can do the resuspension, reseparation to try and skew towards slightly higher recovery. However, I wanted to also give a little bonus suggestion that if you're the type of lab that really needs to try and further increase that recovery, then something else you could consider doing, although this could come at further expense to purity, is to try titrate down how much of the dectrin rapospheres are added. So again, using the example of the 17955 kit, which normally calls to add 50 microliters per mil of dectrin rapospheres to the cell suspension, you could elect to only add 37.5 microliters per mil. Or if you really want to skew this towards higher recovery at the potential expense of purity, you could add half. You could add only 25 microliters per mil worth of the dextrin rapospheres to the cell suspension. Okay, so this all you know, can be just a balancing act between purity needs versus recovery needs. And certainly it could happen that you, know, you might want to discuss some of this with someone, you know, depending on your uh, site-specific considerations. So you can always reach out to us, our scientific support team at tech support at stemcell.com, or certainly you may reach out to your dedicated in sales representative if you have any other questions. And with that, hopefully some of the information that we've outlined today is of some assistance. Happy sciencing.